What's going on, traders? How we doing? Welcome to the one, the only, the SPACs attack. We got some movers right now shooting on up. We'll be talking about that. Our watch list, we'll get into that. We're also going to get into the merger votes that are going to be in October and pay attention. There just could be another runner. We've been seeing a lot of these stocks go ahead and run during their merger vote dates. That month is very important. Pay attention. We're going to talk all about them right here on SPACs Attack. You guys hit the thumbs up and let's get the show started. Yeah, definitely like they say out there, get to the smashing like they say. So you guys know what to do. There's only one thing. Hit the thumbs up. Let me know your opinion about the SPAC industry. What are you guys thinking? Hit the thumbs up if we're going on up. Hit the thumbs down if you're going on down. And if you do that one, you might as well just hit the back button and get on out of here. But let me go ahead and bring on my man, the brains of this show. Chris Ketchy, what's going on, man? What's going on, Mitch? Happy Monday. Yeah, great comment out there, Born to be Free. Uh, everyone smash that like. You, you heard him. Um, yeah, Mitch, we got some uh, news to talk about. We do have a huge deal that was announced this morning. And then what, as what? you said, we're going to get into that October calendar. Also, September is not even over. There is a ton of votes tomorrow. Tomorrow shaping up to be one of the biggest SPAC merger vote dates in history so we'll cover that later on on the show as well all right looks like born talking about the goat the goat in the chat you already know if you guys don't know who the goat is or don't know who nicola damasi is check him out you just might learn something about specs let's go ahead chris let's take us back to these headlines like you always do and hey inform us man i've been gone for the weekend i need to know what's going on out there in the spec industry All right, guys. Yeah, so let's start with some analyst notes. Uh, it's usually the first area we get to here. So up first, one of our big movers, we have Lordstown Motors, ticker R-I-D-E. Shares are currently down double digits. The company getting a sell rating from Goldman Sachs. This is pretty uh, notable because Goldman Sachs actually had a neutral rating previously on Lordstown Motors, a company that struggled and is in need of cash. Um, the analyst said that there is a number of headwinds for Ride and expects a competitive market um, and said that operational challenges could hold back shares. The price target on Ride from the analyst, $5. We have shares today, uh, $7.78. Looks like we are up now on Ride. We were down this morning. Um, but yeah, $5 price target here. Then we have one of the fast movers of the past couple of weeks, IronNet, I-R-N-T, Needham initiating coverage with a buy rating and a price target of $29. So this is an interesting one. I mean, this thing shot up from $10 all the way up to $60. It settled in the $20 uh, plus range. We're down 6% today, but a nice call out here from the analyst. Um, so we'll see if IronNet can get another leg up this week. And then we have OPAD, OfferPad Solutions, OPAD, online real estate company. Jeffrey's initiating coverage with a hold rating and a price target of $11 on OPAD. Um, shares of OPAD falling right back down to that $10 level. We're at $10.08 right now. Keep an eye on this one, another hot flyer. Um, we'll see if we can uh, hold that $10 line today. Um, you know, otherwise this one could uh, face some resistance going forward. Then we have big news for Rocket Lab, RKLB. They landed a deal with the U.S. Space Force, $24.35 million to develop Neutron Upper Stage. Um, so this is the Upper Stage launch system in support of national security and defense requirements. Um, th this is pretty important. There actually was a note out from a, a noted industry expert, uh, Michael Sheets, who listed the dollar amounts. So 
SpaceX landed a $14.4 million deal. United Launch Alliance, $24.35 million. Rocket Lab, $24.35 million. And Blue Origin, $24.35 million. So Rocket Lab actually getting a bigger piece of the deal than SpaceX and falling in line with Blue Origin and United Launch. So uh, uh, decent names out there. Um, definitely keep an eye on Rocket Lab. I think they're going to land more and more deals um, and kind of keep that duopoly going with SpaceX. Then we did get a merger vote date set for HZAC with Vivid Seats. We'll talk about that one later on when we go over the October calendar. And then we have Blade, B-L-D-E, um, a EV toll company. News out that David Zaslav, who many know as the former chair of Discovery Communications, he resigned from the board of Blade. He is the largest outside shareholder in the company. So keep an eye out on this one. Um, again, highly competitive EV toll market, and this could be um, a potential negative catalyst given his uh, you know, uh, stature and also his share count. So keep an eye out, BLDE. Then I did look at stock this morning and three uh, SPAC-related names, all trending, RIDE, which I already discussed, GGPI, which we're going to get into in a minute, and then GOEV, which has gotten a lot of attention recently. Um, so those are three names to watch today. Another big mover that we will get to on that watch list, LCID, Lucid Group, of course. They have a, uh, a event today, um, so we could get more color from the company. Um, also, the Polestar deal, uh, putting the company in the spotlight once again. And then on Friday, we did get some decent buys from uh, ARK Funds. So ARK K buying another 240,000 shares of DNA, Ginkgo Bioworks. Um, ARK W buying 89,000 shares of Genie, Genius Sports, G-E-N-I. And then we had ARC G buying 242,000 shares of Quantum Psi QSI, while also selling 80,000 shares of SEMA 4 SMFR. So some notable big purchases there from ARC and Kathy Wood. And then we turn to our deal announced this morning. This one has been highly anticipated, and you know people have been waiting on it since the uh, rumors were first announced a couple months ago. We have electric vehicle company Polestar announcing a merger with GGPI, that's Gores Guggenheim. This values the company at $20 billion. That's down from a previous estimate of $25 million um, when this deal was first rumored. Investors in Polestar include Volvo, uh, Geely Automotive, and Leonardo DiCaprio. So current GGPI shareholders will own 3.8% of the new company, the company will trade as ticker PSNY on the NASDAQ. So they released the Polestar 1 in 2019. And since then, they have been an established electric vehicle company. They have cars on the road. They're targeting the premium and luxury markets. And they said that they cover 80% of this target market. Um, so the Polestar 1 and Polestar 2 are both award-winning vehicles and well-known. They operate in 14 countries. Uh, the Polestar 1, 155,000 and range of 120 kilometers. And the Polestar 2, a price point of 50,000 to 60,000 and a range of 540 kilometers. So the company delivered 10,000 vehicles in 2020. They expect to sell 20,000 in 2021. Polestar 3, expected to release in 2022. This will be the company's first SUV, and it'll come with an expected range of 600 kilometers. Follow that up with the Polestar 4 and Polestar 5 in 2023 and 2024, respectively. They're building additional factories to help the company scale and increase production uh, for those new models. So they're currently in U.S., China, and parts of Europe. Um, 30 countries by the year 2023. They call themselves the only global electric vehicle peer play alongside Tesla. Revenue of $1.6 billion expected in 2021. And they see revenue growing at a compounded annual growth rate of 83%, hitting $17.8 billion in 2025. 
They have a target of 290,000 deliveries in the year 2025. This SPAC values Polestar at three times fiscal 2023 revenue and 1.5 times 2024 estimated revenue. So arrivals out there, Tesla, Lucid, Neo, and Xpeng have multiples of 10.8x, 6.5x, 4.0x, and 3.5x for fiscal 2023. So getting a cheaper valuation on a price to sales model. And then 2024, again, a 1.5x multiple for Polestar. Compare that to 9.3x for Tesla, 3.6x for Lucid, 3.2x for Neo, and 2one for XPeng. From 2022 through 2025, Polestar expects compounded annual growth of 78%, beating Tesla's 18%, XPeng's 55%, and 35% for NEO, trailing only Lucid at 85%. And then we uh, did get some news out on the DMY merger um, with IonQ. So DMYI, uh, they see this uh, combo going through with tomorrow's vote. And Niccolo Damasi noted on Twitter that they had single digit redemption. So less than 10% of shares redeemed. We also got the AMHC uh, merger closed with Jasper Therapeutics. And then HCIC uh, merging with Plus, they have delayed their closing due to the restructuring of their deal. So that's what I've got for headlines. And, and that big, exciting deal, Mitch, I mean, this one was rumored, I think, back in July. We talked about it on the show, a pure play global EV company, $20 billion valuation, um, if you look at Lucid, Lucid, you know, obviously has a much higher, a market cap of $41 billion. And this company compares uh, very similarly to uh, Lucid. Uh, what do you think here, Mitch? All right. Had to get a second there to get this on the screen. I, I want to show you guys. I mean, there's no better way than kind of talking about this with of course, showing you the video that we did, guys. I mean, you guys got to check the Polestar 2 EV. We actually did a video on this. You guys can see AT re-ripping on AT. this. There's I, AT. I took the audio off because you got to go hear it for yourself and see it for yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and throw up the link here for you guys. You guys check this video out whenever you guys get a chance. It was a review that we did on the vehicle itself. So if you want to learn a little bit more about Polestar, I definitely recommend checking it out. As you guys can see, the car coming down the street there. You guys got to go ahead and check it out. Oh, you saw that? A, a little takeoff action. I think, Mitch, if I remember right, isn't this the one, too, where lots of people on the street were doing uh, the, the head turns to, to look at this car? Hey. Um so this is an exciting time, right, for electric vehicles. I mean, this company, as you saw, already has cars. They already have revenue. They're expected to hit $1.6 billion in revenue this year. Um, and they're ramping up, you know, production, deliveries. They're going to put out an SUV next year. But let's face it, already have two cars on the road. I mean, that's more than some other EV SPACs can say. Yeah, that is true. A lot of them can't say that they have a lot of vehicles out there. So we'll definitely be paying attention to this deal and how it continues to move forward. I say now we get to our watch list. Go ahead and check out what we got moving out there. Of course, there's going to be a lot that we can talk about. We'll go ahead and touch some of those. If you guys got one that you guys want to pay attention to, definitely mention it in the chat. We'll go ahead and hit some of these. And like always, let's get to our watch list time. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look here. What kind of stocks do we got moving on out there and where should we go looking? First one I'm seeing on the list is, of course, Helion Holdings up about 8.9% there. A pretty good day there for Helion getting off of the 860s, starting to push up there towards the 946. What are you thinking here, Chris? Yeah, I was actually looking to see if we had any uh, news. Um, I have not seen any news on Hylion, but that is a decent sized move. Um, Mitch, I mean, I, I was trying to look at the chart too. This thing hasn't closed above $10 since, you know, early 
uh, early August, it looks like. So uh, I'll be interested to see. I mean, we're at what, nine, 945 right now. Um, if this thing could get another leg up, I mean, remember $10 no longer a floor, but it is a key mental level for a former SPAC here. All right, like always, guys, take a look here on the monthly chart. Let's take a look. Do we start seeing a bottoming action? And what do you see? You're seeing monthly support right underneath it. I think a lot of people are seeing this and starting to take some attempts towards these SPACs that they feel can get off of their levels and come back through that $10 level. As we've been seeing a bunch of these go to 14 and 15, some even 20. And I mean, we could go even further than that, but definitely, I mean, moves from here up there towards 14 15 even $20 are going to be massive moves for stock like this because you're talking about a 50% return if you go after that from these levels. We'll see what happens with Hillion. And, of course, uh, I mean, there's a couple other ones that have been making that same move that we're talking about, right? So DNA, perfect example, one that came off the lows there underneath 9 dollars and then coming back up through the 10 now up there towards 1363 and so this is a perfect example right almost a 40 percent return from that 10 dollar level but what you're seeing is a bunch of washouts right before it this is when you get a lot of these merger votes to change and kind of the float to change and then you see the lift of the stock but of course you got to be careful with these because the downside is underneath that nine dollars no longer holding towards that 10 but not bad trades on those quick little scoops up. I'm seeing uh, DNA, DNA up 8%, um, 1361. That one's been holding pretty well since uh, since the merger. Um, Danimer Scientific, Mitch, DNMR up 7% today. I don't see news out of that one either, but I know we talked about it last week. We had some news. Um, it, it got a $21 price target uh, from... Cohen and also a, uh, I feel like it got another one before that too. So uh, it, it did have that deal signed with Phillips, um, also has deals, you know, with Pepsi and Nestle. So that one's starting to get more and more attention here. Danimer, DNMR. Yeah, I like this one. I called it out last week for it. I didn't get into it myself, but of course, today kicking myself a little bit because I haven't been paying attention to this one, even though I really like the chart. Um, I'm going to be paying attention to see if it gets back above 20. 20 is going to be an important price point right now. It's looking like it's heading towards that area right now, trading at 18.23, up about 7% on the day. And this is one that we talked about on Friday. So let's see if it can continue to move here and we'll see how these stocks trade. Mitch, it looks like they're saying that the chart is not up. We got we got Aaron in the chat saying that he can't see the chart. There it is. There it is. Sorry, sorry Aaron. Uh, yeah, so here we were looking at a chart, but you guys couldn't see it. But you heard us, right? So right, Danimer right, Scientific, right, right. DNMR. There's that chart. There's DNA. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it at least. I showed you guys these charts, but then didn't really talk about them. So this is the same one. We're seeing the monthly supports here on Hillion. So clearly you see monthly support here. And then DNA is a perfect example of these stocks that have been moving from the $9 area above that, going up towards that 14 $15 area. We'll watch this one. And of course, this was the one that we talked about recently, DNMR. We'll see if it gets off those three bottom lows, which is pretty much above 16. We don't want to see it come back towards 15.23. And we want to see it head towards $20. And we'll watch DNMR. All right. Another one here that is moving up, has moved from the lows. And I'm of course keeping an eye on this one. Uh Proterra, a lot of people are watching this one just pushed off that $10 level one more time. I think you're starting to see some bottoming action. And one thing you do see is, of course, volume here. So if it gets through this high and closes above this high, which is 1055, I will be liking for any retrace towards 1050 to maybe get in and risk towards $10. So I'm looking at PTRA for a swing trade, and we'll see if this one can start running. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's take a look here at Fisker. Fisker gaining off the lows. What are you thinking about this, Chris? We've been seeing EVs trade on up. We'll see if this continues to make a run. Uh, having a good day today off of those 15s up there almost to 16. I could see this one getting to 18 in a hurry. What do you think, Chris? 
Yeah, I mean, I think based on evaluation, Fisker, I see in a market cap of $4.4 billion. Again, they don't have vehicles on the road, but you heard me say Polestar, $20 billion, Lucid, $40 billion. I mean, if Fisker can really deliver, I think $4.4 billion is going to undervalue them. So it looks like we could be getting a valuation makeup trade here as well. Yeah, I love the $15 level. If it can get back towards that level, I would definitely take a shot. But I was watching even that level today, and I got the shot to get it. I just didn't take it. So as you guys can see today, what did we do? We pushed above 15, retraced towards the 15, and then blew up right through that level. Now, that's the level that I would like to see hold on any pullbacks from here. And you can see Fisker make a move on up. All right, let's go ahead to the next one. Next one I want to point out, and we can just keep going down the line, is uh, – of course, uh, Lycee has been kind of, and I, I don't even know if I can call it that, Lycee here is, is moving on up through the 12s. This one has been moving uh, kind of pretty good on the daily. I mean, if you look at this daily, it's just taken off. And, and what do you need? You need a good volume pop at the bottom, right? A retrace, volume buy again through that level. And then what? When you get up towards the highs, you want to see another volume pop as you get through that other high that you have right here, major resistance. Now you're seeing it up there towards 1186. Of course, you're going to run into those overhead supply uh, sellers around the 12, but I think a lot of them already got out on this candle. So we'll see how this one can continue to run. Chris, what do you know about this one and why did we get such a great reaction? Yeah, I mean, life cycle, it's another one of those sustainability ESG plays. I mean, that's been a hot, hot sector. They have good investors. They've also been on a news spree, right? Signing lots of deals. Um, you know, one of the things we hear with electric vehicles all the time, right, is what's going to happen to the batteries, right? How are we going to recycle the batteries? How can we improve that life cycle? Lifecycle really taking the lead here. So as EV stocks move up that you just said, Mitch, I think this is a, a sympathy play in that same sector. Uh, Lifecycle, I think, is going to benefit from the growth of electric vehicles. All right. We'll see how these continue to run. We could take a look at some other one. I know Playboy has been setting up for a little while here. So keep your eyes on this one. I'm expecting to hear news come out later this week, probably for their NFTs. And that could get it really pumping back up there towards 35. We'll keep an eye out on this Playboy. Um, maybe another one. Any other one standing out to you, Chris? I saw DMS up uh, 6%. I know that's one we've talked about before. Um, you know, programmatic advertising, digital. This one fell for a little bit, but it could be making another run here. Definitely keep your eyes on this one. Fast acquisition also up today. Uh, interesting one, Chris, because it just has a lot of support. And you can see the daily kind of chop zone. But look at the weekly. It starts cleaning up. And if you look at the monthlies, you'll really start seeing the cleanup action. And we're looking for it to continue moving. Let's see if it gets on through these levels, these 1284s. It's been sideways from this 1128. I think it looks like it's trying to break out through 13. 13 would be the breakout point. It would want to see some volume come in there. What's going on with this one, Chris? Yeah, you know, this this one I, I wish I would have gotten into. FST, I remember writing an article when the um, Golden Nugget deal was announced with DraftKings. The thing that uh, gets lost in the mix is that FST actually owns a sizable chunk of Golden Nugget online. So they're going to benefit when that deal goes through. Right now, this is a restaurant and casino play, a reopening um, you know, trade idea. Plus, they're going to get that cherry on the top with that golden nugget you know, transaction uh, profit. So FST has got a good story as well. I will let you know the, the reopening trade has looked hot today and has looked hot since last uh, Friday. We'll see if it continues to trade. It looks like this one's trading with that. It could get hot through 13, make its move toward 14, and then from there, take a lift off. We'll see if this one gets moving. FST. All right, guys, let's go ahead and let's start going into our merger calendar votes. We want to go ahead and give you guys the votes this month what are coming up so this is the time when you probably want to go ahead and you know bust out a little pen and paper start writing this down so that you can keep track of these dates if not of course come back to this episode and check out these vote dates let's go ahead chris unlock some specs what we do best and get into those october merger votes
All right, guys. Yeah, let's take a look at the October merger vote calendar. So today's September 27th. We're only a couple days away from October. So the October calendar is a little bit on the lighter side compared to the past couple months. But I do expect more uh, merger votes to be announced as we get going. So up first, we have October 4th. So this will be uh, uh, next week. We have LSAQ with Science 37. Um, so this is a smaller one, right? A bio deal. I don't know as much about this one. Um, with that being said, these are the ones that have smaller floats. If they get heavy redemption, sometimes they get a lot of eyes on them, get a lot of attention. So LSAQ, you know, should at least be on your radar as a potential short-term trade. And then on October 5th, we have ITAC, ARB Robotics. So ARB Robotics, um, you know, is one we talked about when that deal was announced. I mean, this one's traded essentially flat. I don't expect it to get a ton of attention. Um, but again, this is another low float one going into the vote. So it definitely uh, could get eyes on it. And then we have STWO on October 5th with ESS Tech. This is another smaller deal. I don't know this one as well. So I tend to stay away from the ones where I'm not as familiar with the companies um, and what they do. Um, this is an energy play, though. So this is, uh, you know, interesting. It could get some analyst attention. Uh, so keep an eye out, STWO. And then in mid-October, we start to heat up a little bit more. On October 12th, we have LOKB with Navitas Semiconductor. Um, you know, we recently saw Indy, right? INDI, a semiconductor play, get hot. Um, I like that area. Um, so LOKB, I think we could get some, you know, analyst attention. If you look at that chart, though, I mean, mostly just sideways trading. Um, but again, that merger vote date presents a major catalyst for this company. And then on October 13th, we have MRAC with Enjoy Technology. Enjoy is a uh, omni-channel uh, retail company. They bring the store to you. So they have partnerships with Apple. Um, and others, the they were the SPAC was led um, by Ron Johnson. He formerly worked for Apple and Target. I think this one we've already seen Loop Ventures, Gene Munster's company, um, put out several notes on this company. I expect this one to be hot um, when that merger goes through. I think their relationship with Apple, the ability to kind of piggyback off of Apple's retail success, I, I think is a major catalyst. Then on October fourteenth, we have. VIH, their merger with Bact. This is one VIH has already gotten a lot of retail attention. You can see that that uh, increase there on the chart, that volume spike. That was from retail traders kind of backing this one. This is going to be a cryptocurrency play. We've seen how some of these uh, companies can trade in relations to crypto. So VIH definitely on my watch. Um, I think this could be one of the hotter ones in October. And then on October 14th, we have HZAC that was just announced today for that merger vote. They are merging with Vivid Seats. So Vivid Seats, this could turn into a reopening trade as well, which you just heard Mitch say, reopening trades getting hot. Vivid Seats, they partner with stadiums, with concerts to, to sell those seats. They offer you know low prices, last minute tickets. Um, this is an interesting one. And the SPAC has some... Uh, strong relations with several uh, sports figures. So I, I keep an eye out on HCAC. I think they're going to have some partnerships to announce down the road. And then on October 19th, we have BOWX with WeWork. This is one of the larger ones announced. This thing took off. It, it actually, I mean, you can see on the chart there, it didn't hit its high on, uh, you know, if you look at the deal announcement, it actually came back, hit another spike. And now it's starting to get some attention too. WeWork could obviously, you know, be mentioned as a reopening trade idea as well as people go and work in an office, rent out that space, um, B-O-W-X on watch. And then on October 20th, we have another small one, SAB Biotherapeutics with B-C-Y-P. Um, again, trading at 10.07. This is a float of around 12 million. 
Um, the company is uh, announcing some news uh, last week on their phase three trial. They have a COVID-19 trial. So obviously good timing for them. If they can turn in some positive news and also get this deal done, you can see that volume coming in on that announcement of their trial update. So BCYP um, is definitely one to watch um, in October. And then we have on October 27th, we have TMTS with NextNav. Um, that's another one where I just don't know the company as well. Um, this is a 16.9 million uh, million share float. Um, one to keep an eye on. You can see, you know, volume coming in on that one again. So some of these October merger votes are starting to get more attention. And I actually think I skipped on October 14th. We have Lego, L-E-G-O, Algoma Steel. Um, that is one I actually own shares in, L-E-G-O. The steel trade has been hot this year. If you look at like STLD and X. Um, so this is one of my favorite SPAC deals for October. So Mitch, uh, I, I look at the October calendar and the, the ones that are on my radar, at least, are um, Enjoy with MRAC, Backed with VIH, and Algoma Steel with Lego, L-E-G-O. Anything stand out to you uh, with the October merger votes here? Joe, man, let go of my ego. I, I skipped it. And that's the one I own. Like, how did I skip Lego? I was like, wait a sec. I skipped Lego. Let go of my ego, man. I'm going to have to definitely watch that one. You can't see the memes coming. I, I already I see mean, them. You, you can see that. And also, I mean, Mitch, I've heard you talk about X before. I own STLD, another steel company. And that thing is up 80%, I think, since I got in earlier this year. I mean, the steel trade has been hot. And you look at Lego. And I mean, they announced that deal and we're trading at 1088. This thing almost hit um, $12 earlier. So I, I kind of think this one could get another run in October. I mean, steel is steel's a hot sector for, for analyst attention too. So uh, keep an eye out on uh, Algoma Steel with Lego here. Yeah, I like the name. I'll definitely keep an eye out on this one. And I mean, you got a couple of them on there that are interesting. Uh, the Vivid Seats one's going to be interesting. Uh, we've always looked to see what was going to happen with Vivid Seats. Was it going to go public or not? And, yep, it definitely decided to go public, so keep your eyes on that. Um, and, I mean, there's a couple of names here that you guys got to watch for quick moves. Uh, you can start seeing that it, even in uh, that WeWork one, that uh, Bo, uh, Bo X, uh, B -W, uh, B -O -W X here. So check this one out, guys. Look how – you're starting to set up properly, um, which is what sideways action, right? Long periods of sideways action gives us a really defined support. The stock pops on volume, right? 3.7 million shares traded on the 16th. I'm not sure there was specifically maybe a catalyst that day, Chris. Maybe you can check. Uh, but when the stock popped, one of the things that happened was it quickly came back down what? To the $10 level. It was down at $10 here. It went 996 994 then what 998 998 boom finally getting above 10 here 1009 but what does it do 998 on the downside then what do we get finally here 997 and then what ends up happening now we get this explosion above 10 what do we want to see we want to see this close above 10 today the low today is 1002 and then tomorrow you want to see it close above 10 then you can get that big lift. We'll keep an eye out on this one. I think it might run prior to the merger date. And some of these are going to do more of a buy the rumor going into the merger date. And some of these are going to do more of a sell the news type or even after the after the merger, make that move. So you don't know an exact pattern right now. One thing you got to do is just keep a close eye on the stock especially the price action if you're seeing price action like this start setting up you got to keep a close eye on it because when it goes it's just going to take off all right chris any of these other ones you have on your watch you want to talk about mitch this is why you got to have benzinga pro right because i just went and looked up b-o-w-x and we actually had news this morning that i completely missed we work to host investor day on thursday october 7th so the merger is on October 19th, but you're going to get an investor day on October 7th. So, 
I think this thing could get hot, you know, before that merger vote. I mean, this this company, they reported earnings in August that were actually pretty strong, um, that a lot of people, I think, thought, you know, WeWork was going to, you know, just kind of go, you know, wayward, right? Because no one's working in an office. But I think the opposite ended up being true. So that investor day on October 7th could be a key to watch here for uh, WeWork. I would keep an eye on it. We'll watch what happens with this. And I mean, good, good catch there on the investor day could be a run into that. And then you see the sudden news. We'll see what happens with this stock in the next couple of days. All right. Chris. I just want to hit on September real quick. You know, as I said, we, we've got some votes tomorrow, right? We're not out of the woods yet for September. We are not out of the woods at all. Tomorrow we have seven votes, Mitch. We have DMYI <laughs> with Ion Q. We have SPFR with uh, Velo 3D, a 3D printing company, right? We have CAHC with L- Lumira DX. We have Glio with Shapeways, another 3D printing. We have MAAC with Roybot Sciences. STPC with Benson Hill. We recently had them on the show. They're plant-based, soybean, um, and uh, yellow pea technology. And then we also have PTK with Valen Semiconductor. Seven votes tomorrow, Mitch. Uh, DMYI, it looks like that vote is going to have no trouble going through, right, with IonQ as expected. Those shares have been on absolute fire, right? I mean, I was talking about this thing when it was $10. And I said, hey, this is quantum computing. It's going to get lots of attention, lots of analyst notes. We're up 10% today, Mitch, 1242 and you heard me say Niccolo Damasi put out a tweet and he said, hey, only single digit redemption. And I won't even tell you what he actually said about the people that redeemed their shares. But let's just say he thinks they're going to regret it. So uh, DMYI, I on Q, uh, it, it's looking good this week uh, with that merger vote tomorrow. Yeah, this is one that uh, I think uh, I, I know for myself, I'll be kicking it because I don't have it in the investor account. But this is one that it's one of those that I feel so good on that it's hard to even talk about because, uh, you know, we one thing that Chris and I try to stay very much away from is trying to pump our own positions. And so it's one of those that I feel so good. I want to talk about it 24 seven, but then I don't want to own it because then I'll feel like I'm just a little pumper talking about it 24 seven. But that's why I, I'm I, since I'm not in it, I feel I can talk about it. And I do feel that this is a great stock, um, has great potential. And one of the things that most people don't understand is that this is one of those disruptive technologies that can really change the future, not only for, let's say, in one industry, but in if not all industries. I really do think that the quantum computing can change all industries. And with that being mentioned, I mean, I want a piece of some kind of technology that can create that much of a mass difference for the future. What are you thinking, Chris? Yeah, I mean, look at that volume. That volume over the past couple of days is actually, it's pretty close to what was when the deal was announced. Mitch, you talked about disruptive technology. I saw a report this weekend, um, you know, that obviously was a, a negative report. It was talking about FedEx and it was saying, that FedEx is returning, I don't remember the figure, but let's say hundreds of thousands of packages back to its warehouse because they can't keep up. They have a driver shortage. The logistics don't work out. Do you remember when we had the IonQ CEO on our show? One of the areas he actually talked about was logistics. And he said that they they can use their technology And they can map out routes for drivers for a company like FedEx to where more packages can get delivered. And I mean, he said some staggering figures. I don't even remember them. But let's just say, I don't think FedEx would be bringing packages back back to the warehouse because they'd all be delivered. So this is disruptive technology. And they're going to be a peer play quantum computing company. And anytime you only have, you know, one or two stocks for a sector that's ripe for growth, I think it definitely is uh, going to get lots of attention over the next couple of weeks. Hey, Chris, I, I don't mean to say that, you know, we've been noticing it, but we've been noticing it. <laughs> Have you been seeing it? 
There's a change here, guys. And with that change, you have to start being on top of these. One of the things I start suggesting is going back to the approach that I first started with, which is building up a portfolio of these with an equally weighted approach. So looking at these as understanding that, hey, maybe, you know, how many, I don't, I don't know how many we got here, but let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11, uh, of these stocks on the October merger vote date, maybe five of them make a big move. Maybe six of them make a big move. But I want to have some exposure to these and have an, uh, an ability to diversify between them. Cut losers small. Take those big winners. That's what we're going to be looking for to continue seeing this pattern. One thing I have been seeing is stocks make big moves on up. Those $13, $14 moves from $10. Those are 30, 40% moves that we were not getting, let's say, two months ago. As we both know, Chris, we, we started seeing more of 10% and 15% returns on the movers. Now we're seeing 40 to 50% start coming back into play. And when Chris and I first started this show, that was the very trade that was the start of this show. It was essentially that a lot of these were moving 30, 40, 50% on the announcements, right? Now we're moving more closer to the merger date, but we're still kind of getting the same moves. Yeah, and I mean, the biggest thing now is, you know, the the new, um, you know, trade, right? For a while, it was the uh, share redemption, right? And the companies that redemption were the ones that everyone was getting into. Oh, what are we seeing? It's good companies. It's the ones with growth potential. So we saw DNA run, right? Ginkgo. Ginkgo didn't have high share redemption. We're seeing IonQ run. They had less than 10% of shares redeemed. I mean, sometimes now it's worth following the next trend. And that trend is find disruptive technology, find good companies of SPAC deals that were trading at $10. They've gone, you know, underloved over the past couple of weeks while everyone, you know, shied away from SPACs. And now you're seeing it peer play growth, disruptive technologies trade. Yeah. I mean, what does this show you, Chris? What are you, what are you, what are you thinking here? What, why do you think there's so many of them popping off that $10 level? What do you think? You, any, any thoughts? You know, for me, I think it's, 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 you know, these deals were announced and, mm -hmm. you know, they got that pop. So back months ago, people were willing to pay up, you know, at a premium to what the deal was announced. Then we saw shares go down, right? So then valuation came down. And now we're seeing where, you know, again, we're paying less attention to valuation, more attention to growth. Uh, I like the pure play companies, um, you know, and people want exposure to some of these high growth areas. All right. I'm showing on my screen a SPAC ETF that you guys can keep an eye out for a move. I'm going to be looking for a SPAC ETFs to start also moving, showing us the same thing that I'm looking for, which is that there are coming back into a new wave, a new run. We'll see what happens with these SPACs. But one thing that I wanted to point out, Chris, was that to me, what this shows is institutional trading. Why? Because at the end of the day, what do institutions do best, right? They do fundamental analysis, right? And so what are they going to go ahead and do? You're going to try to figure out where the valuation meets the stock price, right? Where does that market cap actually get to a level where the business perspectives make sense? And I think this is what all the hedge funds were, were at least the ones that were looking at SPACs, we're doing when we as retailers were what we're getting them out of our minds. We're stop stop thinking about them. Why? Because they had gone sideways for over three months. And after that three months mark, I've noticed investors' interest starts going away. That's when we start getting these institutionals to start stepping up and taking the money right underneath our feet. So pay attention towards that. That's what I think is happening here. And with that being said, what would you see if it was institutional reaction is you would see a lot of money being bought up at those bottom marks. So these big pops that we're seeing on the charts of volume, that's usually giving a little bit of an indication sign to me that there's some bigger traders in this making these money and making these returns that we're seeing, which are 40 to 50% returns off of those big bottom moves. 
I mean, wouldn't you want to do it, Chris, if you owned a, a hedge fund and could make 30 to 40 percent on your money? I mean, I like 30 to 40 percent gains, so I, I would definitely take that. Yep, definitely. I, I think that's what's happening. It's here. It's a it's a risk and return thing, but also to me, it makes sense more for smart money to be here winning than retail traders to be here winning. We'll see what happens and continues moving. Keep your eyes on these. There's a lot of them out there, and we could see some big movers. All right, Chris, I say we go ahead and jump into some stocks from the ticker. We got about 12 minutes left on the show. I think it's a perfect time to get into our ticker time. And, of course, we can take a look at whatever you guys want to look out there. And this is your time to get some stocks in the chat. Now, you guys do us a favor, throw a stock, and, of course, hit the thumbs up. Let's keep it going. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. All right, let's go ahead. Let's take a stocks from the chat. <laughs> it looks like someone wants Tesla. No, wrong show. <laughs> no worries. You can ask for Tesla next on Power Hour. I'm sure they'll talk about Tesla. If not, come on over to Money Mitch. Uh, like someone said earlier in the chat, I'm still kicking myself that I don't have Tesla from 630. But we, we could talk about that on Money Mitch. Let's go ahead and keep going. SoFi being thrown in the chat. Sue and... and uh, how do you you want you want to try to say that, Chris? Uh, Ilion, we'll call him Ilion. Hey, I like it. I like it. Ilion wants so far. You got I, it, my friend. Yeah, so far it was hot last week, right? I mean, if you look at the five day, this thing went from you know about fourteen fifty all the way up to like seventeen seventy five. We are down a little bit today, but I love the story here, and I think that bank is coming. Um, in October and November, the company recently had good earnings. They've been starting to ramp up their uh, news and press a little bit too, Mitch. I saw um, their CEO, Anthony Noto, on Pompliano's show. Um, I also saw their investor, um, their head of investors was on CNBC, I believe today is going to be on. So they're getting their story out there more and more. So SoFi, it's, it's got a lot of attention and you can see it in the volume there too. All right. So this is a clear chart that I'd started tacking pullbacks on. Why? Because I do see strength clearly on the chart. And, and so I do see clear support holds too, right? So at least I have what's called multi-layering of support underneath me because that's what I want. Because at the end of the day, this isn't going to turn around and just crush through those levels in, in let's say a day. Um, so what I would watch for is for pullbacks, about 50% of this candle, 50% of this candle. Let's say we started this candle. The low is 1442. The high is 1779. So I'd be looking somewhere in between the 16, 1625 area. It's okay to have an inside day today. That's what you're getting today. You're getting that inside day where you went right to the high and just came right back down. You want this to go sideways for a day or two, then break up through that level. We'll be watching SoFi to continue watching it. I would look for even a breakdown of this level, uh, coming down closer towards, let's say, 1650s, then taking off. We'll watch to see if SoFi can get that bank charter announcement. That's what I think gets it back towards 20. And this has been a good one if you go ahead and take support off the monthly lows. If you look off the monthly lows, every time it comes to a monthly low, it ends up going up. So up, comes down towards a, a, a monthly low, makes that support, then comes back up, comes back, back up, comes back, back up. So that's what shows you that it's very important to have levels to go off of because it's going to give you an ability to at least measure your risk and return on this one. And now if you get it back up there towards 22 and you were targeting 15s, 14s, I mean, that's a that's a great trade right there. All right, let's go ahead and keep going. What's the next one up? SoFi has the stadium. Uh, yeah, yeah, February yeah. Super Bowl. That's another catalyst. We're a couple months away, but nice call out there. I mean, SoFi is going to get a lot of attention uh, with that naming, right? I mean, the the, the stadium is pretty, pretty awesome. I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen that one, the LA Rams stadium. Um, and then also the Chargers play there, right? Yeah, I think both, right? Yeah, I think but, both I mean, play there. The the Rams with Matt Stafford. I mean, I don't know if I want to talk about him, former Lion, but anyway. So well, what do we let, got for? Let's just say he picked a better team, but. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, he's three and zero, oh, so I mean, <laughs> I think he knows where where he went. But yeah, let's keep three going. and zero, oh, zero oh, and three. So, uh, yeah. So, what's up next, guys? Uh, you pick one, Chris. Oh man, we got so many coming in here. Uh, Look at these guys trying to sneak these stocks that I like. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, I feel like we did desktop metal the other day. I don't know if we want to keep going with that. Yeah, I, I'm I'm in desktop metal, so let's just keep that off the radar. Yeah. How about <laughs> IPOF? I haven't looked at IPOF recently, Mitch. Um, again, there was some rumors that to announce. Okay. We we were at 1040. We're back down to 1018. I mean, how are we looking? Uh, Mitch on support lines because an 18, this is a decent risk reward, right? Cause your, your mm-hmm. risk here is possible $10, um, you know, floor price and you're at 10, 18 and I, I'm liking this one. I am long IPOF. I think they announced a deal that is going to be a, a game changer because Chamath is going to want redemption. But again, that's just my opinion, not financial advice guys. What I would say to that is Chris is that, what what did we say was needed to happen? I think when when we were going to get Chamath backs to come back, we needed another wave. He's not he's not going to just pull this out if he doesn't see it out there in the market. If there isn't investors' interest in SPACs, why make announcements when you have time to hold off on that announcement? You just got to ask yourself. I think there's certain people that are rushing to the announcement, not taking the market into consideration whether they should go public or not. This was the first reason why SPACs started to get hot in the first place because the market was there for them to go after that investor's money, right, Chris? So I think they're waiting for that next round, waiting for that interest. So Chamath is looking at his at his caller ID and being like, how many calls do I got this week? So I got 12 last week. I got 24 this week. I'm, I'm waiting for the 36 calls, something like that. Think about that's it a, that way. That's a you great I mean? point, Mitch, that, yeah, I mean, SPACs are getting hot again. And maybe Chamath, is, he, he's been the, the the smart guy all along because he's waited. I mean, he's who waited wants to, through who all wants, this period, right? Who wants to announce a deal and have your, your SPAC go from $10 to 1005, right? Why not do it when all these, you know, SPACs are getting hot again? And I mean, you could be right. So I, I think IPOF, the risk reward here looks uh, looks great. So, but again, I am long IPOF. All right, I'm going to keep going. We got Nicki Minaj in the house. I was just going to, we got Nicki Minaj, MTTR, Matterport, Mitch, this is one of the the best performing SPACs, I'd say, over the last three months. And and it's held up well. I mean, it has gone up really since it was trading between 14 and 16. And then it just took off again. Uh, I mean, we're in the 20s. This is a company that is helping several industries, right? They're helping real estate. They're helping automation. Um, You know, so I, I like this one. Again, follow the disruptive technology um, follow the partnerships. Matterport's got some great partnerships. MTTR. And, and if Nicki Minaj, I mean, likes it, I, I mean, who knows? Uh, the only thing I can say about this one is be careful. That looks like a hard turnaround there on uh, the 23rd there. So not saying that it's going to come back down towards this line, but that's what my technicals would point to me. Is it coming back towards support, trying to find a support line? And to me, that support doesn't happen until about 19. Um, so you're talking about $3 down from this level. But it, it, it did make a nice move on up. And this is a, per, a perfect example of what sideways action, then getting above the level, coming back to the level, and then breaking out. Because that's what you want to see a lot of the times is when we get breakouts, if it doesn't come back and hold as it support, and this is why you don't want to overextend yourself really quickly when you see a breakout, because a lot of people buy the breakout and then they see the pullback and then they get stopped out and then the stock breaks out completely holding that resistance as a new support. So you see how this stock was chopping through this level. The weekly will give you that, hey, Clear support, 14.05, clear resistance above it at 16. We get these wicks, but these are extremes. No body closing above here. And then when you look on the daily, look how when we finally break through this 16 right here, we break out through it. But what do we do? We come back and we reclaim that number. 
before we take off. This is why it always gives you, and this is why when I see stocks break out, I always tell myself, I will have an opportunity to come back if it's a strong move, because a strong move will go ahead and come up, come back, recollect buyers. That's why you're seeing these volume bars and then take off. Those are my favorite types of trades because you're getting that chance to get the pullback and get that money that we're all looking for. All right, that's going to be it on MTTR. We're going to be wrapping up here in about two minutes. What else do we have for the rest of the week, Chris? I know that we don't have tomorrow's specs, but we want to go ahead and get you guys the information that you guys need out there. So this is what I'm going to tell you guys to do. You guys see this guy right here? This guy? This guy? This guy, Chris Ketchy, you guys see that at Chris Ketchy, go ahead and at him tomorrow and later in the week. If you guys have a SPAC that you guys want him to take a look at, he could probably get you guys a headline, at least get you guys an answer. And who knows? Maybe he's trading it himself. You guys catch him on Twitter. This is our SPAC expert. And if you guys want some news, I say you holler at him, send him a DM, send him a Twitter message. Whatever it may be, I'm pretty sure this guy will get back to you. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm always, uh, you know, ready to help out the community. We've got some great loyal viewers here. Also, we've got some new viewers, but we're all about education. We're all about, you know, sharing what we know, right, Mitch? So, yeah, no show the rest of the week. I know many out there are going to be sad. We've got great things happening at Benzinga, though. So tomorrow... We're going to be presenting some small cap companies that maybe you've never heard of that should be on your radar. And then Wednesday and Thursday, I mean, I'm excited. You know, again, no SPACs attack, but I'll be watching in the background. We have healthcare companies at our next Benzinga event, healthcare. That's been a disruptive, uh, you know, segment. There have been some SPAC deals announced in that sector. And then on Friday, we have our company quarterly meeting. Benzinga is always growing, guys. We're all about you, the fans, the viewers, Zinger Nation. So on Friday, we'll bring more ideas on how we can keep building Benzinga for the best news and trade ideas out there. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get you on out of here. But before then, I want to tell you guys down below, you guys see this right here? Boom, boom, boom. Who wants to win a chance for a free year of Benzinga Pro. This is an over $2,500 package. You guys want to go ahead and get a chance to win. All you got to do is show up to our healthcare stocks conference this week. Yes, I said it, guys. Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to be having a healthcare stocks conference. Come learn about these healthcare stocks and also have a chance to win a, a sweet prize. I mean... Can't go wrong with that. We'll see you guys there. You guys can check it out, bzsmallcap.com, and, and we'll see you guys there. Like always, up next, you guys got the power hour, the one and only. Coming up next, we're going to be talking about the stock market crash or new, new all-time highs. Which one are we going to get? You guys find out. Come on over to the power hour. See you next time, guys, on the SPACs attack. Like always, Bye, everybody. please give us a like. Give us a share. Let everybody know the best back show in the world is right here on Benzinga.